Summary of Native Son by Richard Wright The events of the first chapter of Native Son take place in the Thomas family apartment in 1930 Chicago. Bigger, his sister Vera, his mother, referred to as Ma, and his brother Buddy all live in the same room. Ma and Vera see a rat, and Bigger kills it with a cooking pan before leaving for the day. That afternoon, his mother and Vera tell him that he has an interview with Mr. Dalton, a rich, white real estate mogul on the south side of Chicago. Bigger runs into his friend Gus on his way to Doc's pool hall, and the two talk about jobs they would like to do if they weren't African-American and therefore unable to do many of them. Bigger tells Gus that if it were possible, he would be a pilot. Gus and Bigger go to the pool hall and meet up with Jack and G.H. The four decide to rob Bloom's Deli. Gus is the least ready to do it because the gang has never robbed a white person before, and Gus is afraid of getting in trouble. Jack and Bigger go to a movie, which shows a footage of Mr. Dalton's daughter, Mary Dalton, and her communist boyfriend, January. Bigger and Jack go back to Doc's, but Gus comes later than the other three. Bigger threatens Gus with a knife, and Gus runs out of the pool hall. This stops the group's plan to rob the store. When Bigger got mad, he broke a pool table and Doc told them to leave the hall. Bigger goes home for an hour or two and then heads to the Daltons for his interview. Bigger is going to be a driver for the Dalton family, Mr. Dalton tells him. His first job will be to drive Mary to her lesson that night. The Dalton's maid, Peggy, greets Bigger and tells him that one of his other jobs is to feed the heater in the house. Bigger drives Mary home that night, but she says she wants to meet up with her friend Jan instead. Jan and Mary have dinner with Bigger, and even though they are trying to be nice, they end up embarrassing him. The three of them get drunk, and then Bigger drives Jan and Mary around the park before dropping Jan off and taking Mary home. Bigger takes Mary, who is asleep, upstairs and puts her to bed. While he is in her room, Mrs. Dalton, who is blind, comes in, smells alcohol, and thinks that Mary is drunk again. Bigger puts a pillow over Mary's face to keep her from telling her mother that Bigger is in the room. When Mary's mother leaves, Bigger learns that he has killed Mary by accident. Bigger takes her body downstairs and burns it in the furnace. He then goes home, sleeps in his flat, and wakes up in a daze. The next day, Bigger learns that he really did kill Mary, so he goes back to the Dalton house to come up with a reason why he wasn't there. Bigger thinks it's most likely that Jan killed Mary, so he starts to tell Mrs. Dalton, Mr. Dalton, and Peggy, who know Mary is gone, that Jan stayed at the house late the night before. Mr. Dalton calls private detective Britton to ask questions about Bigger, and Britton also calls Jan to the Dalton's house. Jan says he didn't come over the night before and wants to know what happened to Mary. Jan asks Bigger why he is lying, and Bigger pulls a gun on Jan in the furnace room downstairs. Jan then leaves. Reporters gather at the house to hear a statement from Mr. Dalton. In the meantime, Mr. Dalton says he got a note from Bigger, which he didn't know was a fake, asking $10,000 for Mary's return. Dalton says that he plans to pay the price. But when Bigger is asked to clean out the ash-filled furnace, he spills ash on the floor and the reporters see Mary's white bones inside. Bigger sneaks out of the furnace room, but he is now on the run from the law. Bigger goes to his girlfriend Bessie's house and tells her that he killed Mary. He makes it seem like Bessie has no choice but to go along with his kidnap plan, since she is now accessory to the crime. Bessie, who is scared, runs away with Bigger and hides in an empty building. Bigger raped Bessie in the factory and then killed her with a brick so she wouldn't tell the cops what happened. Then, Bigger walks around the city in disguise, trying to stay away from the thousands of police officers who are looking for him. Bigger is finally found on the roof of another building in the Black Belt. He is shot with a high-powered hose, which hurts him. He is taken to the police station while people yell and call him things like Black Ape. Bigger meets with Buckley, the state's attorney, his family, the Daltons, Jan, and Jan's friend Max, who is Bigger's lawyer. Bigger also meets with a preacher, who tells him to pray for his own soul. Buckley writes down Bigger's confession, which Bigger signs. 
After seeing a burning cross in Chicago set up by the Ku Klux Klan, Bigger tells the priest that he doesn't believe in an eternal soul and that Christianity has no use for him. Max talks to Bigger about his life and asks him about his upbringing. In the trial that follows, Buckley asks for the death penalty, but Max says that Bigger's upbringing and the hard lives of African Americans in Chicago and other parts of the country should convince the jury to give Bigger life in prison instead. But the jury finds that Bigger should be killed, and Max's appeal to the governor of the state fails. In the last scene of the book, Max and Bigger talk, and Bigger thanks Max for listening to him earlier. Max is surprised that Bigger hasn't really changed much, though. In the last pages of the book, Bigger tells Max goodbye and asks that she also say goodbye to January. About the author. Richard Wright was born in a rural part of Mississippi. When Wright was a child, his father left the family. His mother worked a series of low-paying jobs until she had a series of strokes between 1918 and 1920 and needed medical care for the rest of her life. Wright did well in school until he was forced to drop out of high school and start working. In 1927, he moved to Chicago, a place that helped him grow as a writer and thinker and on which his book Native Son was based. Wright worked at the post office in Chicago as a mail sorter. Wright read a lot of modern English and American literature as a young man. He also read a lot of translated European literature. Wright joined the Communist Party in Chicago for a while. After writing his first novel, Laud Today, which was finally published in 1963, he moved to New York City in 1937. In 1938 and 1940, he wrote Uncle Tom's Children, a collection of short stories, and Native Son, a novel that made him famous. Wright's Black Boy, a story about his early life that was mostly made up, came out in 1945 and made him even more well-known. Wright went to Paris in 1946 and mostly lived there until he died in 1960. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.